Maybe outside of like musical theater, this has to be the most physically demanding genre because I asked so much of you guys. I mean, the screaming is one thing. From your point of view, what does the horror genre and them, this series, uh, ask of you in particular? <laughs> well, the, the screaming and the tears is definitely, I mean, by the end of filming, I think I had no more tears left. Like I was literally dehydrated. I had to like drink water to keep going, you know. It also, in a very beautiful way, showed me that I'm much more capable than I ever thought I was. Um, so I'm glad that it challenged me in the ways that it did. Um, but yeah, it required everything. It required all of my experience and knowledge and just everything and then some, and then I had to still pull from, from other people and research and all of that. So. Mm -hmm. It was, it was good, but it was worth it. You know, the story and Lucky and the people who could actually relate to the story um, deserve nothing less. I think it was a horror, without the horror elements of the gore and the blood and, and the supernatural elements, it's a horror anyway. You know what I mean? What, what, what people had to go through, our people in the, in the 50s, 40s, they were going through real life horrors. And you add the genre specific stuff on top of that, then we have like, you know, it's like a huge melting pot of, of just, it's very dynamic, you know, you have, yeah, you have the real genre elements and then you have the real life experience that um, the characters are going through. And like, like Deborah said, it's just, you know, it's, it's a weighty piece. It's a, it's a, um, a piece about American history, black American history, which is American history. And it's very real, you know, we was experiencing real horrors in the 40s and 50s and 60s and you know fused with the genre specific elements is what makes for a dynamic show and i think that me from for me personally it was just make, about making sure that i did, could do the part justice and i could play this black man authentically and um having little marvin write this character um i just, yeah, just wanted to make sure that i did the part justice I know we learned the reasons why Ruby and Gracie have the names that they do, but I, I mean, I think maybe it's a cruel irony that your character's name is Lucky. I wondered if, if you had any insight into to why she's Lucky. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I feel like it was a very um, honest move, right? Because mm. I know being Nigerian, we, we name, being Yoruba, we name, um, or parents name their children, the community names their children um, based on what they see in them and based on what they hope they will become and be hmm. in life. Um, and so even when, even if they don't experience that or even if they have times where they're not experiencing what their names mean, um, they can still be reminded and call upon that strength and call upon that, you know, the meaning of their names. So I feel like with Lucky, I feel like, her name is not based on what people who see her as them think about her. It's based on what she thinks about herself. It's based on what the people who love her think about her. You know, you know what I mean? I feel like her family calls her that. Her, her husband calls her that. You know, her kids don't call her that, but the people in her community call her that because that's what they think about her. And I think it's a beautiful thing, you know, no matter what all the things that she went through um, throughout this journey to just be reminded of, of how the people who love her see her.